All right, welcome back to a brand new video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can create like a custom welcome message for uh, reoccurring users. So users who join our server again, and then brand new users. And we'll do that by saving user data to our database. So if you have not seen the video where I showed you how we can connect to the database, definitely go ahead and check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and watch that. But uh, let's go and get started. So we need to listen to the on player join event and we are already doing that okay if you haven't seen my video on how to listen to events uh go ahead and also check that out too okay but basically we listen to the on player join event and basically this event is uh executed whenever a player joins right so when a player joins we can see that it will go ahead and send a join message to the server and it'll tell the user welcome to the server so what we want to do in this method is we want to go ahead and check if the user's data exists in the database. And if it does, what we'll do is we'll say, hey, welcome back to the server. If the record does not exist for the user, that means that they are brand new to the server. So we'll just say, hey, welcome to the server for the first time. Okay. You can also use this event too to give brand new users like a starter kit. I know a lot of servers have plugins where brand new users can get like starter tools like, you know, wooden pickaxe, wooden shovel, wooden uh, axe, you know, just, just stuff like that, basically. Okay, but um, before we can do that, let's go ahead and refactor our code a little bit. Because right now, uh, what's going on is we have this uh, constructor from the last video, where we connected to the database, and we also created the user table. And uh, the problem with this is that uh, if we were to go into my event listener, you can see that we don't have access to the user DAO in order to actually interact with the database. So what we'll do is we'll actually refactor our code. So that way the my event listener class can actually get a reference to the user DAO, uh, to the user DAO instance. So then we can use that to connect, well not connect, but like interact with the database. So, so I'll show you how we can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and define a private field, call it uh, database URL. And I'm just literally just taking this and just moving this up top here. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll also uh, take the connection source and then move it over here as well. And I'll also make this field private. But instead of uh, creating the instance at the top level, I'll actually create the instance inside the constructor. Uh, like this so this dot connection source equals whoops equals new jdbc connection source okay and then uh what i'll also do is i'll define a private field for user dao so private dao user integer user dao and then we will reference this dot user dao and then we'll assign the value of dao manager dot create dao Okay, the reason why I'm doing this is because then I can reference these fields and then pass them into a uh, classes constructor when we do instantiate classes. Okay, so for example, uh, we'll go into my event listener and what I'll do is I'll set up a constructor. We'll set up a no arg constructor. Okay, and then we'll set up a constructor with a different signature. And this second constructor will basically just take in a DAO, the user DAO instance. So we'll import the DAO class up top here, right? And it needs to match the the key value pair needs to match, of course, or it's not key value pair, it's generic type, right? So user integer. So we'll do DAO user integer. Okay. And then user DAO. And uh, yep, yeah, that should be fine. And then up top here, we will define a private field, call it user DAO. The data type is going to be the same, DAO user comma integer, user DAO. And so when we pass the user DAO instance uh, from wherever we are instantiating my event listener, which is happening right over here in the on enable method, we will just reference this dot user DAO and we'll assign the user DAO instance being passed into the constructor to the my event listeners user DAO field. Okay, this is a common practice in uh, object oriented programming. Okay, so what we do next is right over here where we are instantiating my event listener, 
we will go ahead and reference this.userDAO. So that's referencing my plugins user DAO private field. And because we know that this is going to be instantiated when my plugins constructor is called, that instance will be passed into the my event listeners constructor. And then we are basically just assigning that instance to my event listeners user DAO private field. So then inside my event listener, we can then reference user DAO and we can use that to uh, call the appropriate methods to interact with our users table in our database okay so now that we've done that uh, we should be able to continue but before we do anything else we do want to do a couple things we want to go into our user entity and we actually want to change id to true uh, we want to actually change this to generated id to true okay the reason why is because id is actually supposed to be an auto generated primary key field so we want to make sure that is the case okay we'll also make sure we set up getters and setters for our entity class because right now all of our fields are private and we'll need to set up getters and setters. So in IntelliJ, if you actually go over to code and you hit generate, or you can just do alt plus insert. And then if you select setter or getter and setter, you can generate getters and setters for all of your private fields. Now we're only going to do this for, we're only going to generate getters and setters uh, for unique ID and username. We'll generate a getter for the ID, but we're not going to generate a setter for the ID. The reason why is because you don't set a default value for the primary key. You let the database auto automatically generate that for you. So I'll just generate all three of these and then we'll delete the set ID method over here. Okay. And then we now have all of our getters and setters. So get ID, get unique ID, get username and then we have set unique ID and then set username. So just to remind you, the ID is the primary key. Unique ID is the Minecraft user's unique ID, which every Minecraft user has. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do this. Let's package our code and let's reload our plugin just to make sure that there are no errors going on. Okay. So I reloaded my plugin and you'll see that I actually get an error and it's telling you or it's telling us that it says table users already exist. And that's fine because uh, we are in fact trying to create the table every single time when we reload the plugin, when we reload the plugin. So, and that's happening because of this line over here. So we'll actually change this to create table if not exists like this. So basically this will only create the table if it does not exist. So if the table does exist, then it will not create it. Whereas before it was trying to create it every single time. Let's package our plugin and let's reload. There you go, no errors. Perfect. All right, so now just to test everything out, just to show you that users, user doubt is in fact going to work. What I will do is I'll comment out these two lines of code in our on player join method. So the best thing to do when we want to query for data, uh, especially when you're using, uh, you know, RM light, and this is also based on the documentation too, is we can actually use the query builder API. Uh, so I'll show you how this is going to work. So first we need to go ahead and get the query builder. So we'll do query builder. So this is going to be a class that we need to import from the query builder uh, from Orem Lite, okay? And then this is going to take in uh, the user type and then the ID type, which is integer, okay? And then we'll call this query builder and then it's going to be equal to, and then we're going to reference this.userDAO and we wanna call query builder. So this will give you the actual query builder instance that we're assigning to our query builder variable. And then what we want to do is we want to reference query builder and then we're going to go ahead and call where and then we're going to go ahead and call the uh eq method okay and what we want to do is we want to basically uh query the query for users based on their unique id right the unique id field which is this right over here and so we'll just pass in the field name so that will be just unique id like this okay 
and then we'll go ahead and pass in the value for that unique ID. So uh, the value is going to be, of course, the player's uh, unique ID. But I'll just show you, I'll, I'll just show you how we'll do this hard coded. So I'll just pass in a raw string one two three four five six. Okay, and uh, it's complaining right over here. I think it's because it's an unhandled exception. We'll fix it in just a moment. Okay, and then next thing that we'll need to do is prepare our statement. So I'll go ahead and uh, get the prepared query type as an user because it's a generic. And then we'll call this variable prepared query. And then we'll reference query builder dot prepare. So this will prepare the statement for you. Okay. And then what we can do is we can then reference this style user DAO. And then we can call query for first. Okay. And then we can just pass in prepared query like that. So this will give you a user type. Okay. So you can see over here, um, it should just give you back a user type. So I'll just assign this to a variable called user. Now let's just go ahead and uh, wrap all of this in a try catch. So just take this, wrap this in a try catch. And it throws a SQL exception. So we'll print out x.get message. Okay, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll just print out the user. Okay, and let's go ahead and package our plugin. And obviously, we don't have any records in our database right now, but I'll just show you what the value is going to be when we actually try to log into the server. So pay, pay close attention to the logs, okay? Let's reload the plugin. Let's join our server. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go into our server and you'll see that it prints out null because there are no users with the unique ID of one, two, three, four, five, six. If you look at our database, we don't have any users, right? But you know what, let's go ahead and automatically, uh, let's just manually create one. So what I'll do is I'll just insert into uh, users values. Let's try default. Unique ID, we'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then username, Ensign. Okay, there we go. Let's select from our users table. And you'll see that we have our record, okay? So now, uh, let's just rejoin the server. We don't need to reload the plugin because we didn't change anything. But you'll see that now, instead of logging null, it actually logs uh, a user instance, okay? And of course, we can go ahead and log the unique id we can get the username id whatever we want to do okay but i'm just showing you this to see how to show you how this works okay so let's actually make this code make sense so what we'll do is instead of passing in one two three four five six we want to pass in the player's unique id so let's go ahead and get the player instance first so we can do that let's first declare a variable of type player so this will be imported from org.bucket.entity Okay, up top over here. Player player equals event dot get player like this. And then I'll go ahead and just uh, declare a variable, call it unique ID, and I'll just assign it to player dot get unique ID like this. Because we might need the unique ID later. And remember this is a type of UUID. So I'll just go ahead and call to string. Okay. And then I'll pass unique ID as the value over here, okay? And then it will be good to go. So it will basically query the database uh, and it'll search for a unique ID that matches the user, the user's Minecraft unique ID, okay? So if it does not find it, it'll return null, okay? So what we will need to do is we'll just say, if user is not equal to null, and what that means is the user record was in fact found which means that they have joined a server before. If the user record is not found, we'll create a user record for them. So inside our if else case, if the user is not null, that means the user was in fact found. Okay, if the user is not null, we will just go ahead and say uh, bucket.broadcast message. And then we'll go ahead and just send a welcome back message. So we'll just say welcome back 
Uh, let me do this. Let me use a formatted string. String formatted message equals string dot format, and I'll just do welcome back to the server, and then percent s for the username, and then we'll pass in the user's username. So we'll do player dot get display name. Notice how I'm not doing user dot get username because uh, the user could actually change their username, I think. I think you can change your username in Minecraft. Uh, so you can also update the database uh, for their latest username if you want to, but we won't do that for now. So we'll just do welcome back to the server, player.getDisplayName. Okay? Uh, and then we'll just pass in for broadcast message. We'll pass in the formatted message right over here. Okay? And now if the user does not exist, that means they've never joined the server. So we'll go ahead and create the user. Uh, into the database. So to do that, what we will do is this. We'll go ahead and declare a new variable, and I'll call this new user. And we basically just need to create an instance of the user. Okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and reference new user. We need to set the username and the unique ID. So we'll call new user dot set username, and then we'll reference player dot get display name. Okay. And then we'll Call set unique ID and we'll reference the unique ID. So I already have that value up here already. So I'm not going to just, I'm not going to call get unique ID again. Okay. So uh, I'll also just do this string. Let me clean up my code a little bit. Username equals player.get display name. And I'll just pass in username right over here. Might as well. Let's just clean up our code a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we'll set those two properties. Remember, we're not going to set the, uh, the auto-generate ID. The database will take care of that for us. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and reference this.userDAO.create and we'll pass in the new user instance like that. Okay, and if there are any errors, I'll throw an error, but this should be fine. Now I'll just go ahead and print out a message and I'll just say created new user and then we'll go ahead and send the message and i'll do the same exact thing uh we'll use formatted message and then we'll just say welcome uh we'll just say this welcome to the server for the first time let me add an exclamation mark as well and um we have the username up top there perfect okay so we'll broadcast this message and let's go ahead and package our plugin. And let's go ahead and reload our plugins on our server. And let's test this out. So let's disconnect. Let's join. And you're going to see that in the chat, it's going to say, welcome to the server for the first time, host my Twitch. And uh, the reason why that happens is because our record did not exist in the database before. You can see that in the logs, it says created new user. And if I were to select all columns from the user table you can see that my record does exist i have the unique id and i have my username okay now let's rejoin the server and you'll see now it's going to say welcome back to the server host my twitch and if you look at the console you'll say welcome back to the server and the reason why is because when we joined uh, our record was found in database so uh, the value of user was not null the first time when we joined, when our record did not exist, user was null because when we tried to query the database based on the unique ID, we did not find that record in the database because it did not exist. But now that it does, it'll go ahead and uh, return the actual user instance, and then we'll just say, welcome back to the server. So that is pretty much how you can create a plugin like this. So hopefully all of this makes sense. Hopefully you understand how you can interact with the database and how you can create records. Uh, I'll show you another example in the next episode of how you can create a custom set home plugin. So uh, yeah, that'll be pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.